guys made me manic in 20 minutes. They know if the if it makes me go bipolar. Excuse me? You heard me. I, I did. Let me in. Make me something. I was on the phone with my therapist. Black Fousey. It's done. Ah. Now you guys understand why I'm so pissed off and I'll them too. And now that I calm down, I'm realizing all the destruction that I caused that this happens to me all the time. So if you haven't heard of the streamer FoozyTube, you've probably been living under some kind of rock. The guy is an enigma. I swear to God, I hit my dog. This is someone who is like, certified old head unhinged influencer but in a sense even though he is completely unhinged and mentally insane i almost almost respect his grind because this guy has just been working since day one like he, he's basically done every single aspect you can think that a youtube will do he did the body transformation he was fat and then he you know got shredded he went on stage in front of hundreds of people screaming absolute nonsense i have bipolar and depression what you put into my head made me want love myself oh man and of course what happens to every single influencer that has as much uh energy as fuzzy tube they go over to kick believe me i don't like talking about kick i'm really sick of talking about them in videos it's not the same as mr beast and lunchly but if i do anything else no one cares did you see me playing through black ops 6 on veteran no no one did look at the views it's horrendous why is your voice so low quality <laughs> But surprisingly, even though FuzzyTube is one of the most prominent streamers on Kick, I'm not even talking about views or retention. I'm just talking about clips of him going viral for being completely unhinged. Like the time how he was basically talking about he was the best streamer of all time, like like ranking streamers. Top three. Top three IRL streamers? That's so hard. You got Fousey at one. Okay. And three, not Neon. He's like a hundred. If there's a hundred people on the list, <laughs> Neon's a hundred. Right. Now, you know you have really messed up to be permanently banned on Kick, and that is what's happened to Fousey. Kick is probably the hardest streaming platform in the world to actually successfully get a perma ban on. I'm not talking about like a casual ban, you know, like a, a 24 hour, 48 hour, maybe a week. Maybe it's a month, but if the money goes to the right place, uh, you can get an unban sooner, which I swear is something that Aiden Ross would literally mention, saying that if he got a certain amount of money, he could get people unbanned. Yo, Jack, just remember, buddy, now you're really gonna have to pay me $200,000 if you wanna get unbanned on kick. I'm just letting you know right now. You wanna get unbanned on kick? You wanna funnel your OnlyFans girls? You wanna get back? Now you're really gonna have to pay 300K. You gotta give me 300K cash if you wanna get unbanned on kick. If not, you're indefinitely suspended. Go to Twitch and get banned. I'm excited to announce that I will be attending Games Ground 2024. This will be in Berlin. I'll be doing a meet and greet on the 16th of November, where you can also grab some official merchandise. I've also been asked by the Games Ground team to host an exclusive content creation workshop. And in this workshop, I'll share some of the creative processes behind the videos that I make, especially the very, very long ones. If you use the code PyroGG, you will get 10% off a ticket. The ticket does entitle you to the meet and greet and also the workshop shop so please buy one and hopefully i'll see you there now this comes as a huge shock because fuzzy himself said he was pretty much uh down bad for kick this guy was the number one kick shill he would always talk about how it's the best streaming platform on the planet and i'm pretty sure if he didn't get perma banned a year from now he would have wrote his own gospel of kick that he'd probably charge you 70 dollars for like for example there was a clip of him going around talking about streamers that make a uh netflix levels of income y'all are making all your streamers i don't have to say any names I'm talking about everybody on Twitch and Kick, millions of dollars. I'm not talking about the little streamers, the middle streamers. I'm talking about the big dogs who know they have so much money they can produce Netflix quality shows every day, but they don't. And to stop posting photos of their cars, homes, their outfits. Tweets go viral about you guys making $50 million a deal. You say you respect your fans, right? Stop posting pictures of the cars you're buying, of the houses you're buying, of your new outfits, and start putting money behind your content. Rather to say that instead of using that money on yourself in a vanity sense, you should put the money back into content. And specifically, really bizarrely, called out Pokimane for apparently just sitting behind her desk. It was really the, the names that are in my head right now is Pokemon. Pokemon. Like, though that group. And then also goes on this weird tangent about how he's a grandfather of the internet. Been here way before you guys. I am the person your friends watched in middle school and high school. So when I tell y'all, as an adult, the grandfather of the internet. Now, I will give Fousey one thing. He is an old head. He has definitely been in the game a long time. But just because you've been in the game a long time doesn't necessarily mean that everything you've done has been a banger. Also, two things I want to mention, by the way. Talking about Pokemon, that instantly reminds me of the clip of X 
XQC being invited over to her house and then just farting on stream when she left the room. Dude, guys, what? No idea why I thought about that. And the second one as well, Fuzi talking about using the money made to put back into your content. That's something that Mr. Beast would preach. And as we know, Mr. Beast is in quite a lot of hot water right now. Now, Fuzi is talking about going next level with your content, with one-upping yourself. Don't get complacent. Don't you dare sit behind that chair and react to videos. Don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do what the Pyro TV channel does, where you just sit there in silence watching videos. I do like the Pyro TV channel, by the way, because I'm not sure how I've done it, but I've been able to turn like a 10-minute video into basically a two-hour reaction because I keep pausing every five seconds because I never shut up. But again, back on track, Fuzi is talking about how he wants to one-up himself in content. Everyone else should do the same. This is the guy, by the way, who will lie in the middle of the road. Mind you, with traffic surrounding him, he didn't get the road closed off or anything. He thought it'd be a funny bit, de definitely not clip farming, by just lying in the middle of the road until I, I guess something happened. Yep, that is definitely some Netflix level quality content there, just lying in the middle of the road, hoping that, that something happens. I mean, again, this is a prime example that if this happened on Twitch, he would get a ban. If this happened on YouTube, I actually don't think there's any moderators that work on YouTube streaming. Like, the stuff you can get away with on there is absolutely insane. I mean, I still remember all the clips of I Show Speed showing I Show Meat on stream, and he never got a ban or anything. But to be fair, in that case, he did actually delete the stream as soon as it happened. And I think, like, the two people that actually moderate YouTube streams, like, officially woke up from their cryo chamber and thought, do we ban him? No, he, he knew that was a bad thing. And then they just went back into the, uh, the future armor pod. But again, Kick is, like, this weird one where there are moderators there are people available there, but you will basically just never get a ban. And it's so weird that this has happened to Fuzi. I mean, I still remember a good example is when XQC got his kick deal. And then on one of the first streams, he has like a movie night where he basically just watches The Dark Knight Rises. So something that you might do like on your own or maybe with mates, like a movie night. He tried to do that on stream. And then the mods came into the stream basically saying, okay, uh, we're probably going to get a DMCA and you're going to have the whole site taken offline. So can we, can we stop? Can we wrap this up, please? Not only that, he proceeded to call other Twitch streamers out as well and then say that he is the Mr. Beast of streaming. We treat them to crave degeneracy like Jack Doherty disrespectfulness like me and neon and obviously that statement is not going to age well for obvious reasons uh one he's been banned off kick now at the time of recording and two again we know what's happening with mr beast currently i am also currently working on an update to the mr beast stuff because as you've noticed on the slop channel there hasn't been an upload for about a week that's because i've been in sweden yep i know i know get it out your system play sweden play sweden i get it i get it weeaboos have placed japan Pyrocynical has placed Sweden. But yeah, I know there's a lot that has happened with the Mr. Breast situation and a lot of the other members of the team and stuff as well. Some of it is really bad. Some of it seems to be just straight up fabricated for clicks. Anyways, back to Fuzi. In terms of Twitch beef, it was... Uh quite mediocre. He eventually quote tweeted a streamer that uh, was queefing into their mic on stream and basically claiming that Twitch streamers are just as bad as kick streamers. He even went out of his way to do a quote tweet video on Jason the Ween, who's a really big streamer. He's got almost a million followers. And he was talking about how he was offered a kick contract. Think about going to kick, like you go to kick when you're like kind of retired, like when you just, when you don't want to do anything more What's the way I expand this? That's the game that you know what I'm saying? The fall off streamers is okay. I'm I'm gonna steal that word now. I'm adding that word to my vocabulary. I'm adding it to my Batman belt. Now Fuzi goes on to also claim that when he started streaming on Kick, he basically got ten times the amount of following and also ten times the amount of money. And he also goes on to say that he is the most clipped streamer, which again, like I, I really do like how Kick streamers will use being clipped as some kind of like social currency, like. That's not, that's not a good thing. Like you want it to happen organically, definitely. But like, if it happens too much, you get labeled as a clip farmer. I mean, look at Jigsy. He basically revived the Rainbow Six Siege scene. He was and still is an incredibly popular streamer. But now people like have basically picked up when the guy is clip farming. Like even with me, when certain, you know, incidents happen on stream, people will immediately chalk that up as clip farming. Even though, and I know this sounds like a cope, it is like a genuine alt tab mistake. I think the worst thing I could have done in my streaming career is have two separate monitors. My favorite pretty boy, Fem Twink Pyro. But anyway, Fuzi is talking more about Jason, basically saying he's wrong about his opinion on kick being, you know, where the fall off streamers go. Even though he says he's, you know, so 
famous and successful and he has so much money, he himself has admitted on stream that his content is basically just brain rot, but a long form version. It's but his streams are basically just a two hour long TikTok. Now, however, this all changed. He admitted that his content was brain rot. He also said that he's the most clip streamer. He also said that he is the Mr. Beast of the streaming world, which is a very bizarre statement to make, to say the least. When I used to stream eight hours a day, every second used to be a high moment because I used to be like, I have to stay relevant. I gotta get a clip. But this all changed again when he tried doing a 24 7, 30 day subathon. Now, if you don't know, you, you do, you do. I'm just trying to make the video longer. It's just, just be quiet for a second. Okay? Subathons are money printers for streamers, and it is basically the best way to make millions of dollars or to at least get yourself on the rankings of being the most concurrently subscribed streamer. Any big streamer that does a subathon usually ends up being in first place for at least a couple of months. This happened to Ludwig, Kai Sanat, and most recently, Iron Mouse. And this subathon is where things went very, very wrong for Fuzi, which ended up in the permaban. But before I get into that, I do want to... Th th there's a little bit of a breadcrumb trail of Fuzi having these kind of like manic moments that I do want to go over, which probably led up to this mental breakdown. So a month or so ago, Fuzi was in the news again for having another possible mental breakdown. I also do want to say, I know the majority of the video is, haha, look, look at the mentally ill man, that, that that's hilarious. But he has been very open about having bipolar. He might even have some other like, you know, mental illnesses as well. So obviously... He is still allowed to be criticized. That is not like a free pass to just, you know, act like a complete egotistical maniac. But at the same time, I think it's really important to say that and to put that out there for people that are watching this video. Now, this is something I was actually going to make a video on before in the past. Basically, Fuzi went completely off the grid, off the radar. No one heard from him. Even to the point where his manager actually tweeted from Fuzi's own Twitter account, basically saying, we haven't heard from him. And apparently he's missed his flight to Atlanta. His manager on Fuzi's Twitter account then shared another tweet, basically saying that Fuzi Fuzi's family did a wellness check on him and basically couldn't find him. He wasn't at home and they couldn't find his luggage either. On top of that as well, his car was left at home and apparently he withdrew $1,000 from an ATM in San Diego. But despite all of that, and he was obviously on the move, there was no official word from Fuzi. And also apparently on top of that as well, there was some random guy trying to get money out of his team by claiming that he knew where Fuzi was. Like I get it, Fuzi has lost like most respect on the internet, but could you imagine that this guy is missing and no one knows where he is? And then you have like absolute scumbags reaching out being like, I, I know where he is, but only if you pay me, you need to give me money first. He even tweeted some pretty concerning stuff before his disappearance. Like for example, saying that he couldn't sleep, putting his phone on do not disturb, and then straight up saying as well on top of that, catch me if you can. Now the problem is with a situation like this, it is basically the boy who cried clip farm. You know, is he actually having a mental breakdown? We know he's been open about his bipolar, but also time and time again, Fuzi is someone that tries to push the boundaries of how far he can get away with something. And then when it all crashes in, and he doesn't get the clip, he doesn't get the notoriety, then it's the apology. And then basically give it five weeks and the exact same thing happens again. I know I can make this joke in hindsight because he's safe now, obviously, this is an older story, but it's more the fact how when he made that tweet, he definitely just watched like, you know, Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, probably while like smoking weed or something like that, and probably convinced his own brain that he was Leonardo DiCaprio. No, no, no. He would have said himself, I'm the Leonardo DiCaprio of the streaming world. Which again, makes about as much sense as saying Mr. B of the streaming world. He was also streaming late into the night as well, talking about how he basically wasn't going to put on a character anymore. And it's also been an extremely emotional week for him. And I swear to God, you're going to see a side of me, hear a side of me, and understand me in a way you've never understood me before because I'm not playing a character today. Now, his management were really concerned because Fuzi is someone to time and time again consistently have mental breakdowns. And he even actually had one last year, which led him to get a mental health evaluation. And then they decided to share this information on social media to try to find out where he went. And and it didn't go anywhere. Now, not too long after the management were tweeting about him, like looking for where he was. Thankfully, they also tweeted pretty soon after that Yusuf, uh, which is Fuzi's real name, was safe and well. Even in the texts that were posted, you can really see that Fuzi is actually a bit upset that they went public with this info. And he's basically concerned that everyone, again, thinks he's crazy. And then he basically tweeted a video of himself verifying that he's okay and nothing bad has happened to him. Guys, I'm gonna try to say this as calmly as possible this time. Hi, I'm okay. I am healthy, but they're trying to do it to me again. And um, I'm gonna be as calm as possible, but you can't do it to me again. Not again. I'm perfectly fine. I'm healthy, as you can see. Hi, hi guys, my name is Yusuf Salaharakat. I go by Fusi on the internet, and I just want to let you know that I'm healthy and I'm okay. 
Now, I do get the concern that he's worried about people, you know, thinking that he's crazy. Like, you know how I got these cars? But again, Fuzi, I feel like even without the bipolar, has a very, like, kind of erratic personality. I remember for years and years, he's done really bizarre things. I mean, one good example is when he posted what I believe to be, I think it was an Instagram story, basically atting Drake, saying that, Drake, I'm waiting outside your hotel room right now if you want to go meet, which is a very bizarre behavior if you never had any, like, contact to set this up beforehand. Yo, Drake, I literally look like a crazy person right now because I'm outside of the place that you're at. Don't ask me how I found it, bruh. God put me here. I'm on God's plan right now. I'm walking in God's purpose. Where your dad is, who I know personally. I do want to pause the recording, by the way, because I just, I, I found the cat again. Look at this little cat. Look how long this cat is. How, how are cats so long? You can really tell I've just never had a cat. I don't even know how to hold her properly. I'm going to put her on my legs now. And she jumped off. Yeah, it's over. Just a disclaimer, by the way, as well, before the RSPCA or Peter get involved, that is not my cat. Don't worry. Fuzi then went onto a stream and bizarrely was talking about how he thinks basically everyone is out to get him and to put him back in rehab. And he doesn't want to go back to rehab. Imagine this. I'll play both characters. I love improv. Hey, guys, I made it. Hey, Yusuf, get in the car. Where are we going? Rehab. Bitch. What? No! But then afterwards he came out the next day to confirm that apparently now everything is all good and also apologized for his behavior on stream the day before. I'm not sure whether this was manager input or maybe he actually kind of realized, okay, I was having a little bit of a meltdown. A lot of you may have seen what happened yesterday. I'm just posting this to say I'm good, um, I'm healthy. My team had a wellness check done on me just to make sure I was okay and didn't need to go anywhere or do anything. And it was deemed that I was healthy enough. My well-being was a-okay to be able to not have to do anything about it. And that's pretty much where the Fousey disappearance saga ends. But unfortunately, that's not where the entire Fousey situation ends. Again, you will notice this repeating pattern of Fousey doing something very brash, erratic, and stupid. And then he will apologize for it only to do something similar sometime down the road later. It is a constant repeating cycle. Cycle. I mean, I've been on the platform for like, I think eight years now. I'm technically an old head myself, but this is something that he will consistently keep doing. So not too long after that, Fuzi starts streaming again. And this, from my personal opinion, isn't really a good thing because after having such like a mental break, you probably should, you know, get off the wagon a little bit. I know it sucks. I know the way that YouTube and Twitch and Kick and, and streaming in general works. You need to have some kind of, you, you know, you have to keep working, basically. You can never stop because once you stop, then you probably get it in your head that, oh, someone else is going to keep uploading when I'm not uploading. I remember Markiplier talking about this uh, years and years ago, but you know, he basically even said himself, I think when he took a two week break at one point, his channel basically just dropped off for a little bit. And I don't want people to get it twisted. I think that, you know, being a content creator is one of the best jobs that you can have in your entire life without a doubt. But also there is that constant need to keep doing content, keep pushing content out. Because I mean, I mean, a good example is this is the first day where I've uploaded in the past five days. And even then I refuse used to check like my analytics and stuff because all I know it's going to be telling me is you've done a bad thing. How dare you not upload every single day talking about lunchly yeah, like Mr. Breast drama. But yeah, Fuzi was pumping out a bunch more content. He did Halloween Horror Nights, uh, G7 Fight Club tryouts, and even at one point as well, bizarrely, getting a psychic reading. Now, this psychic reading is really, really something because he even asks at one point, uh, he asks the psychic if he's gay or not, which I, I, I feel like this is something that you should probably know yourself. I mean, some people might not be completely aware of their sexuality or, you know, what they're into, but I, I feel like asking a psychic to tell him if he's gay, <laughs> there, there is something really comedic about that. I just saw something in the chat. Am I gay? You're not gay. Can you say that again? <laughs> You're not gay. Thank you. You're welcome. I try to tell people they think I'm gay. Definitely not. However, this pumping out of fresh, new, exciting content was cut short when it was brought to his attention that Fousey's dog, Muffin, was left in his car while on stream. Also, apparently he and his team were taking an Uber to another spot and then asked one of his team why they didn't have someone on that team following the Uber in their car. How did no one think to one of you 
especially one of you can't even be on camera, did not bring our car and follow us behind. So why did nobody propose to have the car follow us to the location? So as he tries discussing this with his group, he gets really emotional, realizing that he left his dog, Muffin, in a car. He gets really, really upset, even starts like punching the passenger seat chair and then begs the Uber driver to drive them back to the location where they were picked up. With, with Muffin! Sir, go back. Oh my God! Sir, go back, please, to where you took us from. I'm ending stream. I'm ending stream. I'm sorry, Hannah. No, that's okay. Um, sorry. So can you take it where we came from? And then after that, he shortly ends the stream. Is it a reasonable crash out? I mean, to be fair, it's his dog. You don't really know what kind of like emotional attachment he has. I, I know this entire video I'm coming across as like a FouseyTube apologist. And believe me, I've done a lot of like negative videos on Fousey in the past. But I also know that some people do have that like legitimate family bond with their own pet. And also you got to keep in mind as well, Fousey has like a pretty manic personality. I'll be honest, it is the worst combination imaginable because it's like you've got someone with a manic personality, bipolar, constant mania and then depression and then he's streaming all the time where like the current meta with streaming is to be as loud and as toxic and as annoying as possible because that gets you the clicks that gets you the attention so if anything in like a really bad way Fousey is perfect for the current streaming meta but no one can keep up with it forever you will eventually crack so once that clip started to go viral Fousey then started basically tweeting about the entire situation he goes on to say that Muffin was left in the Tesla when it had a, a, a dog mode on apparently dog mode is a real thing that Teslas have it basically just means that the AC is left on in the car so the dog doesn't, you know, overheat and die. He then goes on to say that his team will prioritize Muffin on his next streams. I again, like, I, <laughs> I don't understand why you need, like, a team to manage your dog for you. You should kind of just, like, know where your dog is at all times. So why am I talking about all of this? Because, you know, a lot of these stories are months old. I think it's really important because this shows a really concerning relationship between Fousey and his management team. It really shows that Fousey puts too much trust in his management team and in turn, his management team can't really deal with Fousey. Your management team are meant to be producers. They're meant to be fixers. You know, if you need like a, a drink or something or a coffee, or you need them to maybe get like a set designed for you, they're planners, right? They're not people that watch your dog in a Tesla for you. So on the 29th of October, Fousey announced that he was doing a 24-7, 30-day-long subathon. And apparently during the subathon, he was going to record his debut album on stream. Now, I do want to say he does call out J. Cole and Drake in this post, but he doesn't actually bother to call out Kendrick Lamar either. But that's probably because during the Kendrick and Drake beef earlier in the year and Metro's booming track. I know, I, I know, I don't want to talk about it, okay? I, Metro's booming track, Good Kid, Mad City, okay? I, I get it. I'm just going to lie and say I've got like internet dyslexia, okay? And I think during all of that drama, Fousey was basically swinging in Kendrick's favor. As to be fair, like 99% of the internet was as well. Now, Fousey isn't the first person to do this. There was another singer called Eric Doa. I got, I got you, right? I got you. You thought I said it wrong. You thought I said it wrong. No, his actual name is Eric DOA. And he actually did this all the way back in the summer. And he had an upcoming album and he brought on some guests, like for example, Porter Robinson, Wave Dash. So later on in the day, Fousey and his now ex, let me, let me be clear about this, ex-content manager, Nadim, basically went viral as Fousey decided to fire the manager over the camera battery not being charged. But it ultimately ended in a, uh, a more violent falling out. You just tell me that the camera right now is at 15% and it's been 10 hours. Yes. So Wait. how is it at 15% if you charged it at 4 in the morning? I flipped the breaker this morning. The lights have been out all day. There is not a... You know how Mia told me the story? No, sir. She was just, I woke them up at 4 a.m. and I told them what they needed to do. You said it's still at 15%. They didn't listen to me. So f breaker. Yes, sir. F you. Okay. F Joey. Enjoy your time. This is the big leads. You don't have to shake my hand. This is the big leads. You try it out. You fail. Go home, work out with Neon Sniper Panda or whatever Z listers you worked with before me, and then come back when you're ready. You don't got it yet. Shake your head, say what you want to say. Don't go home and play mad. Oh, I wish I cussed him out. I wish I socked him in the face. You suck. I'm telling you that to your face, Paul. I have nothing to say to you other than I can't believe. What? How disrespectful you've been to me. I can't believe how disrespectful you've been to my company live, motherfucker. Okay. You I promised me the world, you tried to promise you the world. You made me lose. When did I promise you the world? Hey, I'll be there at 6 p.m. tomorrow. We didn't start till 7. Hey, there's gonna be thousands of people there. I brought the people there. Thousands. Are you dumb, Rain? Try to come to my place and I'll pay for with a job that was gonna change your life. Shit. Yeah, because you ain't worth shit. Okay. Go work at Chuck E. Cheese. Let me come here. Make me 
Now, I do know that Fuzi, as I've said like 20 times throughout the video, has had a very erratic personality, but even me, I do have a hard time believing the legitimacy of this argument being real. But again, that's the problem when you're a kick streamer. It's always the case of the boy who cried clip farm. So shortly after this uh, crash out was aired on stream, Fuzi was temporarily banned on kick. So usually what happens with the Fuzi cycle, this was an element I didn't talk about. Obviously he does a bad thing, he apologizes. If he gets banned on kick, he will immediately run to Twitter having a breakdown about it. So he originally made some tweets that were, you know, pretty petty, but as more videos dropped, it obviously became pretty concerning on Fuzi's current mental state. He even goes into detail about how terrible his mental health has been recently, and that basically caused him to crash out at his employees. He also references that he doesn't want to have a repeat of last year's incident in Miami, but he eventually then, you know, calmed down from everything. I've been under so much stress because I'm, I promised Eddie and Akil I wouldn't crash out like last year. My adrenaline shot up and I don't even remember the last like 48 hours now that I'm out of it. And now that I calm down, I'm realizing all the destruction that I caused and this happens to me all the time. Now that my adrenaline dumped and I'm back to Yusuf, and I open Twitter and I see what Fousey did. I'm like, oh, I feel so much better now though. I feel free. So not too long after this crash out, Fousey was unbanned on kick because obviously they realized how much of a cash cow he is. And then he still promised to do his 24 seven stream. Now, although he was back on kick, which is probably the single worst thing he could have done because you know, his mental health is still spiraling. He still was really hyped for this 24 seven stream. I cannot imagine a worse combination, like someone that is as manic as FouseyTube being on stream constantly for 30 days straight. I mean, usually when people do like a, a subathon, like for example, Ludwig, you know, they'll sleep, they'll have downtime. Obviously they'll still be on camera, just sleeping. They'll usually have mods set up to entertain the chat or something. But I feel with Fousey, he would probably just stay up for 30 days straight. Over there, by the way, you, you can see, you can see Trog. There you see. So the stream started off with the most rookie streamer mistake imaginable, which happens to me quite a lot because I'm terrible at managing audio. The stream was muted for about 30 minutes. Now, even when I have audio issues with the stream, I am molded, okay? Like I don't try to show it on stream, but having audio issues is one of the worst issues you can ever have because there's so many different things it, it could be. It could be different audio interfaces, different inputs. There could be drivers outdated. A lot of people use a Go XLR as well, like making sure that all the audio syncs up properly. It, is hell. And usually if I ever have audio issues, the first thing I do is run to Discord and message one of my mods basically crying saying, can you fix this for me? Because I am screwed. I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, like I said, I'd be molded. What do you think Fuzi was like when he realized that the audio was muted? He starts cussing out and trying to start a fight with a crew member. And that's all while the rest of the team are trying to then get the audio fixed. And then in like an alignment of the clip farming moons, when the audio is eventually fixed, Fuzi, then you can hear him going on this mental rampage saying he's going to blow his brains out on stream. And he mentions his crewmates as well. Why did I think of Among Us when I said crewmates? He mentions to his crewmates about making the lawsuit bigger. That's in relation to his ex-content manager who is allegedly threatening to sue Fuzi. That is Nadim. Don't touch me. Nobody. Nobody touch me. No, it's not. You guys made me manic in 20 minutes. They know if they f*** up, it makes me go bipolar. Look at my eyes. I'm going to shoot myself tonight. Live. Kick.com backslash Fusi. Done. Uh, now you guys understand why I'm so pissed off? Now you guys understand why I socked that bitch in the face? And I'll stab him too. Make the lawsuit bigger. Watching this clip again, it really does seem that Fusi is genuinely serious about taking his own life. Because again, I, like, like I've said earlier, he's an incredibly manic person. But also it's hard to believe whatever he says with any sincerity because he's been known to do this time and time again. And you can only go through so many mental breakdowns until people just kind of think it's part of your personality and don't really care about you anymore. It also doesn't help that he's streaming on Kick, which is like the number one clip farming platform in the world. So obviously after threatening to blow his brains out off camera, he was then promptly banned again on Kick. Now in most situations, if you're a big Kick streamer, you'd be unbanned in about 20 minutes once you sent some money to Aiden Ross's Bitcoin account. But surprisingly, we got confirmation from none, none other then Sam Pepper that Fuzi was permanently banned. That is because Sam texted Ed Craven directly about Fuzi's status. Ed Craven being a multi-billionaire in Australia who basically founded Kick. All right, I text Eddie. Is that it for Fuzi? Question mark. 
I don't know if it, he's typing. <laughs> he's typing, bro. He's probably sweating over his fucking phone right now. Yeah, no more Fousey, man. This isn't good for anyone. Now, this is a huge thing because Fousey was basically someone, like, he was basically the same as Neon. He was someone that basically had ban immunity. And like I said at the beginning of the video, Fousey would always speak so highly about Kick. And as well, he apparently had, like, a mega contract set up with Kick. And obviously, after his ban, that's not going to be happening anymore. So once again, to no one's surprise, again, I'm talking about the Fousey tube cycle again. He got banned. What's the first thing he did? He ran to Twitter and started crying about it. Now, he was saying, like, really unhinged stuff at this point. He was just going full guns blazing, saying that he wanted to fuck Sam Frank, who's Neon's girlfriend. He's also saying how he's going to move to Australia. I'm not sure if that was, like, a, a kind of sub-threat against Ed Craven, who is an Australian billionaire. And how, as well, he is officially saying goodbye to his views on becoming a rapper. And also directly talking about Kai Sinat, saying that if Fousey got banned within 30 days, which he did, Kai Sinat would have to retire from the internet. His rampage didn't stop there, though. He went on to share a very lengthy letter to his team regarding how things played out in the stream earlier that day. He then also talks about Kick saying that he realizes he can never stream there again, almost like wishing them the best, saying that he wants to see more from the platform even though he can no longer stream there. I do like the way that he words it as well, like he chose to leave Kick, not that he was permabanned off the website. Now you'd think after writing a very lengthy letter and saying that he hopes that Kick does better, he'd stop there, but no, he doesn't because it's FouseyTube we're talking about. He then tweets at his ex-manager Nadine Deem, talking about how he flew his team out to Australia, leaving Fousey by himself, which is ironic because the exact same thing happened uh, with Fousey's dog, Muffin. And once he heard that his ban was permanent, was basically spewing his hatred for Kick. He then proceeds to record a video of one of the employees that flew from Fousey and proceeds to fire him. One of my employees tried calling me and said, dog, I never sent anybody home. You're lying. So I called my employee and I said, hey, did he send you home? He said, sir, yes, sir. I said, did you text him this morning like he told me you told him to and said that he's going, that you're going home and you're scared of me? He said, sir, no, sir. Listen, I called him and I told him, fuck you, you're lying, listen. He goes, I never said that. DJ VIP goes, yes, you did. I go, N I'm gonna fuck your bitch and your wife in front of your fuck dead body. And then it gets even messier because there were DMs that were leaked between Nadim and another ex-employee as well. And then apparently starts by threatening their families and, and the safety of their families as well. Not only that, but he went as far as to call his parents up saying that he disowns them. I'm a Muslim. You guys, you guys put me on this earth, Baba, but now I'm 34, so I'm living my own life. So Baba, this is the last you're ever going to see me. I live in Australia now. The house in San Diego, I'm still paying for. Um, I need you to drop off Muffin to Los Angeles. I'm giving away my dog Muffin to her babysitter. You guys lost me, Baba. I'm living my own life now. As well as apparently firing his therapist as well. We, yeah, we definitely all needed to publicly know about that. Like these allegations, they, they, they just keep coming. Uh, apparently there was another one as well. His ex-manager, Nadim, uh, was uh, spreading a rumor that Fousey allegedly raped a woman. So yeah, you can really tell that this is just mad. The, the, this is mutually assured destruction. Fousey does not care. He's been kicked off of kick. So he's going to try and do as much damage to everyone around him as possible. Most normal sane people would keep all of this under a box maybe they do a lawsuit or maybe you know they kind of bide their time but Fousey just airs all of it straight away even apparently posting a video of him allegedly getting arrested and when he realizes that he's played every single card he's burned every single bridge he then asks Andrew Tate if he can be his understudy could you imagine like a worse timeline where you've got like Andrew Tate being like the Jedi teacher to FouseyTube, like he's the Padawan. He also started threatening one of the guys that he punched saying that he's going to sue him. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that lawsuit will go very well. I really have no idea what's going to happen next with Fousey. And again, I, I hate to admit it, but like this is probably like the top five crash outs that he's had. I wouldn't even say this is number one. Fousey is someone who has on stream multiple times threatened suicide, talked about swatting, talked about doxing. He is a very unhinged character. And even without his bipolar disorder, I really think he would just be erratic anyway. You're going to reach a point though where like it's not funny anymore and it's not even sad. You just become very apathetic to it because this person has done basically the same thing over and over. But repeatedly, he's still given platforms by different streaming companies. He's gone from kick now, but there will always be other places that he can stream because people will see how much of a crash out he is and go, hmm, 
that could make us a lot of money. There'd be a, a, lot, a lot of clips to be made there. I mean, a great example is Neon. Does anyone actually like Neon? Do they respect him? No, they like to make fun of him because if they clip him, it makes them money because they know that a lot of the internet hates Neon. And Neon likes that because for streamers, any news is good news. The same situation with KSI, how he rage baited all the 11 year olds and then turned around and said, I fooled all of you. I was I was only pretending to be a moron. And again, anyone over the age of 11 would have known that. Now, brave statement incoming. I have one of these per video. I think Fuzi needs to take some time off the internet and basically just stop streaming. The guy is definitely well off. He's nowhere near homeless. He probably has at least a couple mil in the bank. He has that time to take like a mental health break away from the internet and like refresh himself. You know, maybe he needs to find some kind of like medication to go on to or maybe some kind of like therapy because again, streaming on its own, you are basically doing a performance. And I know that there are different like ways that communities interact with each other. You know, some people are mocked constantly. They're, they're like kind of a court jester. And then other people are treated with a lot more respect as well. Fuzi is definitely the latter half. People are kind of like laughing at him, not with him. And again, like streaming, doing content, that can really drain your mental health. I, I know the whole meme of like, I get it. Guys, where's Corey Kenshin? It's been a year. All he has to do is wake up and record a video. But I'm talking about the performance of being on stream. You constantly have to read chat. You have to be addressing TTS. You have to be entertaining. It is a lot. I, again, like when I stream, I know I'm sat on my ass doing nothing, but I feel like after three hours of streaming, I could probably sleep for two days because of just how like physically intensive it is. But yeah, what's going to happen with Fuzi? No idea. You'll probably find out he's going to be streaming on Twitter or something soon, and he'll probably just be doing another 30-day subathon. He'll have another crash out, and it will just be, you know, the boy who cried clip farm.